Okay, so the final math component I want to have in the engine is a quaternion. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new class called quaternion. And I'm going to create the four components. So, now if you don't already know, a quaternion is a lot like a vector, a four-dimensional vector. The thing that makes it different is, well, you know how 2D vectors are kind of like complex numbers, except 2D vectors don't have the imaginary component? Well, that's sort of like the difference between quaternions and 4D vectors. The difference is quaternions have that imaginary component. They have the they have imaginary components, and if you remember the difference is it makes rotation really easy because rotation, if you have the imaginary components, is just multiplication. And that's the difference between quaternions and four-dimensional vectors. Why are you giving me an error? Public quaternion, but this is constructor. Java? Are, are you on crack or something? What? Change to cons. Ah, uh, I misspelled it. All right, sorry about that. But yeah, and that's essentially what I'm going to end up using quaternions for. If I ever want to do rotation, I can easily do four-dimensional rotation or lower-dimensional rotation. It's like 3D rotation, hint, hint, by using quaternion multiplication. Because what, what's quaternion multiplication? It's 4D rotation. There you go. Now, as for the methods that I actually care about, first off is length. So public float length. And... Remember, quaternions are essentially vectors, except with that imaginary component, so this is the same as 4D vector length. So, the square root of x times x plus y times y plus z times z plus w times w. And yeah, that's the length. And next up is normalization. So, public quaternion normalize. And, surprise, surprise, this works exactly like vector normalization, so I'm going to take the length, and I'm just going to divide every single component by the length. And that'll set the length of the quaternion to 1. And w divided equals length. And return this. There you go. Excellent. Now, here's one method that vectors don't have, and that's the public quaternion conjugate. Now, if you know conjugates in imaginary number, or not imaginary, complex numbers, all you essentially do is you take all of the imaginary components and you multiply them by negative one. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take all the imaginary components of the quaternion, which is x and y and z, and I'm going to make them negative. And the real component, w, stays the same. And there you go. That's quaternion conjugate. And now comes the really tricky part. Next up, we have quaternion multiplication, and it's a little bit tricky because you know how complex multiplication is essentially like the foil between the two, yeah, two numbers? Well, yeah, imagine doing that with four dimensional numbers, with numbers with four components. It gets a little bit messy, so public quaternion multiply between some quaternion r. So, first off, I'm just going to return a... I'm just going to go ahead and create the components, just because... Why not? So, float w, float x, float y, and float z. So, I'm going to return a new quaternion with these components. x, y, and z, and w. And quaternion quaternion, with the n, and all those are not initialized, but that's fine. So first off, the w. The w is essentially, you take each individual component of this one and multiply it by the same component in that one, and then just add them together. So, there you go, w times r dot dot get w, that should be, and now minus r dot get x plus times, wait, x times r dot get x, whoops. And the reason I'm doing it like this is because, remember, these are imaginary, well, the x components are imaginary, so x, imaginary number times imaginary number, negative number, so that's why it's subtraction, minus y times r dot get y, 
minus z times r dot get z. And wait, there. So that gets the w component of this new quaternion. Next up is the x component, so first off, x times r dot get w plus w times r dot get x. And you don't have to worry about imaginary things here because these all are, these aren't multiplying by the same imaginary number, so it won't equal negative one. It'll just equal another imaginary number. So times r dot get x plus y wait, yes, y times r dot get z plus z times r dot get y. y. <clears throat> there we go, if I can type it there. W is let's see, z times r dot get w plus r dot wait a second. Wait a second. Yes. Now this should be minus because yeah, that should be minus. Cause because those equal, I believe, a negative imaginary number. So, yeah. This is why quaternion multiplication is weird. Anyways, plus w times... Wait, is this w? Come on. I'm sorry, this is a ridiculous equation. It's not exactly easy to keep straight. Uh, w times r dot get y, yes. And z times r dot get x minus x times r dot get z. And finally, z times r dot get w plus w times r dot get z. Wait. Wait. Yes, okay, never mind. I'm... <laughs> Don't worry. See, there's a pattern to it, so it should be okay now. x why? This should be why, shouldn't it? Yes. See, I, I've wrenched this into pattern, so... Eh. Anyways. This should be z, right? Yes. Maybe? Come on. X. No, this should be x, yeah. x times r dot get y minus y times r dot get x. I'm sorry if that was painful for you. Trust me, it was painful for me, too. I... I always hate writing out the quaternion multiplication equation just because it, I'm sorry, I, I could never memorize this thing. It's so ridiculous, but yeah. So one moment, I'm going to double check off screen to make sure I actually did type this whole thing correctly. I double checked off screen and amazingly enough, I actually typed the entire equation right. So what do you know? There's only one method left and the worst is over, right? <laughs> um, I have some bad news for you. Guess what our next method's gonna be? Multiplication. Not between quaternions, but between quaternions and vectors. And believe it or not, it's somehow even more ridiculous than before. So, yeah, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> well, more ridiculous is relative, I suppose. It doesn't have as many as much calculation in it, but it makes less sense, I guess you could say. It's not as intuitive. So, I'm going to return new quaternion containing x, y, z, and w, just like before. And now to write out this ridiculous equation. So this equals negative x times r dot get x. Yeah, minus y times r dot get y, minus z times r dot get z. At least it's a little easier to keep straight, because there isn't as much to it. Fortunately, that's the only negative, so next up is w times r dot get x my plus, yes, y times r dot get z minus z times r dot get y. And, yeah, that's all. Awesome. So next up is w, wait, w times r dot get y plus z times r dot, dot get x, come on, there we go, minus, what's it called, yes, x times r dot get z. And in case you're wondering, the way this works is you're treating the vector as if it's a three-dimensional imaginary number, so 
Yeah, that's why this is so much fun. Whoops. W times R dot get Z plus X times R dot get Y minus Y times R dot get X. Wow, that wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it would be. But, um, yeah, that appears to be quaternion multiplication, and the end, thank God, of all our ridiculous math classes. Next up, we're going to focus on rendering. It's going to all about be rendering mechanics, not writing a rendering engine, but rendering mechanics. How do we send 3D geometry to the graphics card and make it show up on the screen? So that's our next topic. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed, and see you next time. Hopefully a quaternion 3 quaternion free next time.